So my cousin is claiming to be pregnant with my 21-year-old son's baby. Don't worry, they're not related by blood, but still, this is something I can't wrap my head around, guys, and I simply don't know what to do. I'm gonna back up first and walk y'all through it because this one is crazy. Hey everyone, my name's Haley. I'm 44, female, and I'm a mother of a recently turned 21-year-old. However, ever since his birthday, he's been acting weird. And when my cousin visited me, I was shocked to know why. My husband Brandon and I, we had Maxwell when we were kind of young. Brandon and I just got married after graduating from college, and Maxwell had come as a surprise to the both of us. But both of us knew that it's time to get serious about life if we wanted to give this child the best life that we possibly could. I pursued archaeology, and I've been working at the biggest museum in the city. Brandon was working at the construction site as well. When Maxwell arrived, we were over the moon. He was our perfect little boy with wide and curious eyes, and he almost never cried. And if you talked to him, yeah, he would look at you so widely, making you feel like he was actually listening to you even though he was just four months of age. It was clear from the beginning that he would be a listener and would grow up to be an introvert. I know, guys, it sounds like the stereotype, but I grew up believing that those who are good listeners are often introverts. Then we watched him grow into a genuinely nice boy. He was naive and very innocent, even when he was a kid. He was optimistic, just like his father, you know, always daydreaming and just always getting obsessed with hobbies. He liked helping me cook, and he also liked helping his father with the garden. He did not fit in with other kids at school, and he did not like hanging out with other kids. Nobody ever bullied him or anything. He was just busy in his own little world. He loved drawing, and he liked it when, well, we read him books before he learned how to read. When he learned to read, it was difficult for us to get him to stop following us everywhere and narrating a book for everyone. Anybody that would listen. I remember the day when he started taking an interest in photography. It was like the back of my hand. I was doing some photography for my museum artifacts, and I've brought him to work with me after his school was over. He was just eight years old back then. He asked me if he could take pictures of the artifacts, and I indulged him. I liked that he was interested in everything, and I gave him opportunities to explore. Ever since he started asking me to give him my camera, he would go taking pictures of all the flowers and insects that he saw. When it was his 10th birthday, Brandon and I decided to give him a camera of his own. And that's when his love for photography truly blossomed. Before he was 10, he, uh, well, liked staying at home. But when he got a camera on his hands, he started to like the outside world. He would insist that Brandon or I take him to work so he could click pictures of different places. He would often take pictures of the sunset on our way home and even woke up early, super early, to click the pictures of the sunrise. I think this also made him more social as he was willingly starting to converse with my colleagues and sometimes even the museum visitors. His social skills improved by the time he reached high school, and he started to make some friends. He was still a boy who lived in his imagination, but you know what? He did have friends, who would often click candid pictures of his friends all year round, and then gift it to them on their birthday. He was always such a sweet boy. Then he went to college to study photography while working at a part-time job. There, he started uh, dating this nice girl. And I was so happy to realize that he was doing well. He had brought this girl home twice, but they had broken up a few months ago, which left Maxwell a bit sad. My son is a very sensitive boy, and it was clear that the breakup had left him heartbroken. Brandon and I spent hours trying to lift his spirits. We would eat ice cream with him and watch our favorite rom-com with him, but it was not enough. Recently, he turned 21, and I decided to throw him a huge party in the hopes of lifting his spirit. I invited all of my relatives and his friends, and he had recently graduated after doing a Bachelor of Arts in photography. I wanted to show him how proud I was of him, uh, well, for knowing what he wanted to do in life. And his job was starting pretty soon, so I wanted to celebrate. The party, it was a success. I was successful in distracting him from his ex-girlfriend, and he was truly happy seeing people there to celebrate him. So he danced, and he ate... And I felt so happy seeing him this happy. But something happened that night. 
I didn't know exactly what, but I knew something happened. Maxwell had started acting weird the next day, and he even left for another city on the pretense of work. But I knew his work didn't start for another month. He was not taking my calls regularly either, and, well, I got to him once. But he didn't really talk to me or just cut it very short and dropped the call. I was a bit worried, so until cousin Sophia approached me a week ago. Sophia is my second cousin from my mother's side of the family. We've never really been close, so I didn't really know the kind of person that she was. Well, what she revealed told me everything that I needed to know. She revealed that she was pregnant with Maxwell's child. I could not believe a word she said, but she showed me the pregnancy report and told me to ask Maxwell himself if I did not believe her. So I immediately called Maxwell in front of her, but he didn't pick up my call, just as he's been refusing to do for the past few days. Sophia confirmed that she had tried getting in contact with him as well, but ever since they slept together on his 21st birthday, he has not been taking her calls. I guess that explained why I thought my son had been acting weird ever since his birthday party. Honestly, I almost fell sick at what he told me. I couldn't believe my 21-year-old would sleep with my cousin, who was so much older than him. But I was also angry at Sophia. I mean, what sort of 35-year-old goes around sleeping with a 21-year-old? I understand that they're not closely related, but I still felt that this relationship has absolutely been disgusting me. Then Sophia went ahead to ask me to give her money so that she could get rid of the baby, and for her silence against telling the rest of the family about what my son has done. I was furious at her. I mean, how was it Maxwell's fault and not hers at all? But also unbelieving. Unless I hear it from Maxwell, I can't believe her entirely. I asked her how she could think that it was okay to sleep with a 21-year-old. Well, she just looked away and claimed that they were both drunk and did not know what they were doing. Apparently, they only realized what they did the next day when they woke up together. Every word that came out of her mouth made me feel more and more sick. Well, for starters, I did not know Maxwell even drank. He always claimed that he does not drink. But I guess, you know, he had turned 21, so maybe he wanted to try it. But I was furious that he did not tell me. I know I'm his mother, and maybe that's why he didn't tell me. But I'm also worried about what Sophia said. And I guess I'm not really thinking straight. I just don't know if I should believe her claims or not. Sophia left me in quite a shock. I wasn't sure how the family would react. The family might blame Maxwell for this, and even though Sophia is the older person in this situation, but she might just play the victim. But most importantly, I did not know the truth. I needed to hear what Maxwell had to say for himself. Unless Maxwell tells me everything, I would not believe what Sophia said to me. But Maxwell is not returning my calls or text, and I'm getting more and more anxious. I raised Maxwell better than this. I mean, how can he let this happen? And now that he's not even taking responsibility for his actions. I don't know if I should pay Sophia or not. I'm just scared that she'll tell everyone before Maxwell can get back to me with the truth. Update number one. Hey guys, it's me, Haley, again. I finally got through to Maxwell, and what he told me, it made me so angry that I needed time to adjust to this new revelation. It's been a week since my last update. I've been calling Maxwell nonstop for the last seven days without any response. I think he had realized that I knew about Sophia because of my persistent calling, but he did not know that I was not mad at him. I was just curious to hear his side of the story so that we could make the decision, and well, that would be in his best interest. Finally, I thought I would just drop by his apartment, which is an hour and a half away from mine. I found him holed up in his house, and by the looks of it, he looked like he had not come out of his apartment in quite some time. And he was shocked and anxious when he saw me at the doorstep. But I did not want him to think that I was his enemy and was angry at him, so I just hugged him. Well, at that point, he starts to cry when I did. I tried consoling him, reassuring him that I would help him as much as I could during this situation. I even promised him that I would pay for everything. That jolted him out of his meltdown. So he asked me what I'm talking about, and I revealed that Sophia has shown up at my house demanding money to get rid of her pregnancy, and to stay quiet about what happened. He looked truly shocked, as he had not known about her pregnancy yet. He starts to hyperventilate. 
I sat him down on the couch and he kept on telling me that he didn't know how any of it happened over and over and over. So I tell him to take a deep breath, tell me everything so that I could make it all better. He revealed that Sophia and his uncle, well, well, you won't believe this, who is my brother John, has approached him at night with drinks. He told me that he's never had alcohol before and did not want to, but they forced him to. They told him that everybody drinks on the 21st birthday. Why was he being a weirdo and not drinking? So Maxwell decided to have one drink just to get them off his back, and John even joined him into the drinking. Well, Sophia just encouraged it, but they kept on going and going, and they got him drunk. That's all he remembered, because he had passed out after that. Then he woke up to find Sophia's uh, beside him in his childhood bedroom. He claimed that he didn't even remember anything, and he freaked out and left her there. He was crying by the end and saying he did not remember how any of it happened. He was not in any condition to make any decisions, and Sophia took advantage of him. That's when I realized that Sophia had lied to me. Sophia claimed that they were both just drunk, while Maxwell claimed that she did not even have one drink. Only his Uncle John did. Well, Maxwell was pretty sure about this, but this made me suspicious because Sophia was a huge drinker and loved wine, unless she was already pregnant. I think Sophia's trying to trap Maxwell and me with her lies. I think that she was already pregnant before that night and is using my son to get money from me. I'm still wrapping my head around Sophia's lies, and I'm going to ask her for a DNA test before I pay her for the money. Update number two. Hey everyone, it's Haley again. So, it took me some time to persuade Sophia to get a DNA test, and I was pretty sure that Maxwell was not the father of her baby. Yet still, the results shocked me. Sophia had refused when I asked her for a DNA test, and she had threatened to tell everyone about it when my son had done. But I was pretty sure that her baby was not my son's. So I told her that she could tell everyone, and I was pretty sure that if she told everyone, I could convince the rest of the family to force her to get the baby's DNA tested. A few days later, she came back and agreed to it. I was suspicious about it and convinced that she was going to fake the DNA test somehow. So I accompanied her myself so she would not manipulate the test somehow. She was pretty nervous throughout with her legs shaking while she sat in the waiting area. And she was constantly wringing her hands. I think that's a sign of guilt, but I needed proof. I went to the hospital every day for a week so I could get the reports before Sophia was even notified. Well, I didn't want her to mess up with the results in any way, and I got there in time. The test result was just like I expected. My son was not the father of Sophia's baby. But that's, well, not the only two DNAs that I got tested. See, I also submitted John's DNA to get the baby's DNA tested against his. And to my shock, it was a perfect match. Sophia was having my brother-in-law's baby. I'd grown suspicious when John had forced Maxwell into drinking so much for his 21st birthday. And my brother-in-law was not the nicest guy ever, you know. He was absolutely nasty to my sister. And she just stayed with them because of their kids. They didn't really have a marriage. They just tolerated each other because of their teen-year-old twins. I'm convinced that once the kids grow up and go to college, they'll get separated. Because of this suspicion, I decided to stop by my sister's house and sneak into their room just to get John's hair from his hairbrush. I wasn't sure if I was right, but I had a gut feeling about it. And when I had the proof that John was the father of Sophia's baby, I felt so disgusted. I couldn't imagine how I would break this news to my sister. She had been with my, ah, oh, this monster for years for her twins, and it was all for nothing. I've always hated John's guts, but now I'll make sure that my sister is free of that man, and will also make sure that her kids still grow up to be just fine. Sophia has not called me or informed me that the DNA test is here. Even though I know that it is available, I think that she'll try to manipulate it somehow. And if she does, I've proved that Maxwell is not the father of her baby. But John is. Update number three. Hey everyone, this is Haley again, and I have an update. Just like I'd expected, Sophia tried to fake her way out of the DNA test. But what she revealed further shook me to my core. Sophia had come over two days after my last update, and she had shown me a report that said that Maxwell was the father of the baby. 
That's when I showed her the picture of the real report proving that Maxwell was not the father. She grew nervous after that, and especially when I asked her who the real father was. And I told her she better not lie. Well, she kept on claiming that I had messed with the report. The father of the baby was clearly Maxwell. I screamed that I knew. I knew it was John. She stopped talking after that and then began to cry in earnest. I didn't know what to do. I thought that I've been too stern and scared her, so I hugged her even though I hated that woman at the moment. That's when she revealed everything to me. Apparently, Sophia had a bit of an alcohol problem. She had a little too much to drink a month and a half before Maxwell's birthday party. All she knew was that John had taken advantage of her in her drunken state. She claimed that she had tried to stop him, but she was not fully in her senses. So the next day, John claimed that he was drunk and he did not mean to harm her in any way. But he had hurt her. Sophia was a mess after that, and she was so racked with guilt because of sleeping with a married man, well, sleeping with her second cousin's married husband, that she started getting sick every day. It wasn't until she missed her period that's when she realized that she was pregnant. And when she had approached John at the party with the news, he wasn't ready to take responsibility for his actions. He had forced Sophia into trapping Maxwell with the responsibility. She revealed that it was John's idea to ask me for money to keep her silent and to get rid of the baby. It had been John's idea to get Maxwell drunk and make it seem like they had spent the night together, but in reality, nothing even happened. Sophia claimed that she didn't know what to do and that John had just sprung the plan up on her. She did not know what to do. So she just went with it. She apologized, claiming that there was no one that could help her, so she thought that she would get money from me to get rid of the baby, and just used the money to do something right in her life for once. I truly felt horrible for her. She had tried to ruin my son's life, but her life had also been ruined. What John had done to her was inexcusable, beyond words. I felt such sympathy for Sophia. I mean, that poor woman was probably going through the symptoms of pregnancy all alone. And she must be facing the fact that John assaulted her and was now trying to baby trap Maxwell with this. Well, before I let her go, I promised to help her out if she promised not to let John get away with it. She promised that she would speak against him if I helped her out. I don't know what to do. This matter is even more serious than I had initially thought it was. John deserves the absolute worst. He deserves to be behind bars, and my sister deserves to be out of that marriage. With that cheating, a predator. I'll update you guys soon. Update number four. Hello everyone, this is Haley here again with another update. It's been quite some time since my last update, because I was just busy trying to get justice for my cousin Sophia and my son Maxwell as well. Initially, I don't know what to do, but I knew that my sister Bianca needed to know the truth. Bianca was horrified, and uh, there was a mess that she found out. She cried that she had wasted her time with John, and just so her kids could have a father, and now that was all a waste anyways. She didn't want such a man to be the father of her twins anymore. I had wondered if there was any footage to incriminate John in his act, that he had forced himself on Sophia, and it was not consensual. That's when Sophia revealed that the hotel where John had done that to her might have some footage. Yep. So we visit the hotel and found a short clip of John pulling Sophia away in the hallway while she swayed in his arms. He, well, looked sober in the clip and we also saw footage of them both in the elevator. As John tried to kiss her, but she resisted. Trying to push him off, but failing. It was enough evidence for us and... Bianca even persuaded me and Sophia to go to the police with the evidence against John, so we did just that. We went to the cops with the DNA test and the footage. When the police started investigating John, who was furious at Sophia and tried to lunge at her when he next saw her, Bianca had also filed for a divorce. When the police had gathered enough evidence, they arrested John and everyone found out what happened. We had not told anyone about Sophia's involvement in framing my son, she was already a victim, and I didn't want her to get scrutinized by the family. I'd also help Sophia get rid of the baby. She was not in any mental state to have a baby, let alone her assaulter's baby. She didn't want to have a baby, and that was enough. 
so I paid for the whole procedure and even offered to help her financially afterward. The legal proceedings ended recently, and John pleaded guilty. The sentencing is soon, and we had surmounting evidence against him. He lost everything, he no longer has a family due to his actions, and the whole world knows his character. But most importantly, he's going to go to prison for everything that he did. All through this, I've stood with Sophia even though she tried to hurt my son. She had personally apologized to Maxwell as well, and he had not yet come around to her. He's very cautious around people now, and I feel so bad helping Sophia when I look at my son. He told me that he had no hard feelings against me for helping out Sophia, but sometimes I felt like I was betraying him. My husband, Brandon, says that I'm doing the right thing and should not feel guilty. I just hope that Bianca's divorce gets finalized soon and John goes to prison for a very long time. So he can't ruin any of our lives any further. Update number five. Hey everyone, it's Haley again. So, uh, one final update. John's sentencing was a month ago, so I thought I would catch you up on how all of us are doing and how everything ended. First of all, John was sentenced to prison for the next 10 years. His whole life was ahead of him, but he decides that he would be a horrible human being. Now, his kids don't have a father anymore because of his actions, and he'll spend the next 10 years of his life in jail and the rest of his life with the criminal record. Bianca and her twins aren't doing that great. The kids are confused about their father's whereabouts, and Bianca doesn't really know what to tell them. She's revealed that they have gotten a divorce, but not everything, so she just wishes to wait until they're at least 16 years of age to tell them the whole truth. Sophia is doing, uh, okay. She's in therapy and just trying to get her life on track. She's not pregnant anymore, but she has not touched alcohol since that unfortunate night. I think she's scared to ever drink again, to be honest. Which seems like a good thing, but it's just sad that it feels like I oh, has to do this to her now. I let her go with a warning because in all this, her life got ruined as well, and I felt super bad for her. Maxwell is doing great, actually. He's worked hard and is having a fun at work. He often sends me pictures that he clicks to lift my mood, and he hasn't been around much when everything came out. But he, well, uh, we have been in contact every single day. He still has not fully forgiven Sophia, but he doesn't have to. She tried to ruin his life, after all, and guys, I think that's it. Thank you for listening to me, and when I first began writing, I had not thought that this situation would take such a turn, but it did. Today's story was wild, Sophia and also John. I don't know what they were thinking, trying to take advantage of OP's son, at the end of the day, I do want to know your thoughts about it, and um, what do you think about OP basically letting her off the hook? Drop it in the comment section down below. I would love to uh, talk about this one. Guys, my name's Mr. Redito. I do narrate these stories every single day. So if you want to be a part of these stories, consider subscribing. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.